You know, the, the whole thing about perfectionism, I mean, you were asking before about the years that I didn't write. The perf you know, per the perfectionism is very dangerous because, of course, if, if, you're, if your fidelity to perfectionism is too high, you never do anything. Because doing anything results, it, it, it's actually kind of tragic because it means you sacrifice how gorgeous and perfect it is in your head for what it really is. Um, when I'm at my best, um, my vision is the only thing that I can see. Um, sometimes blindly. At my best, I'm naive. I actually believe I can change the world. Um, when I'm at my best, um, my vision is the only thing that I can see. Um, sometimes blindly. Okay, so according to a study published by the Journal of Behavioral Sciences, approximately 70% of people suffer from imposter syndrome. People of all ages, from a variety of careers and jobs, struggle with it every single day of their lives. You've probably experienced it on some level yourself, like not believing in your ability to do something and fearing that people will find out, judging your capability to the point of calling yourself a fraud, and believing that everyone else is better than you are. Okay, so imposter syndrome is this feeling of, first of all, not being enough, uh, the inability to celebrate your achievements and successes because you think that inside you're a fraud and everyone is going to find out that you're a fraud sooner than later. So it's like even if you were able to achieve something or do something that you should be proud of and other people you know, admire you for it and, and they recognize it, um, you can't own that because you feel that it was a fluke, right? And, you know, like maybe now it was, it worked out, but, you know, next time it happens, they're gonna find out that I don't know English or I'm a bad teacher. Um, and imposter syndrome, and, and, and again, I think it's essentially this idea of not being good enough. Um, and it's like about 70% of the population experience imposter syndrome. It's a psychological pattern. Now this happens to all of us. We are still us and we're still human, but we have turned into our own harshest critics. This imposter syndrome is present with so much power in our journey to learn English. How many times have we found ourselves feeling judged while we speak in front of people? Remember that job that fit perfectly with what you wanted to do, but that you didn't apply because English was a requirement and you already felt anxious about the interview? or refusing to apply to that university program because you didn't sound as smart as you wanted to when writing in English. Now as adults, we are especially sensitive to people looking at or listening to us. When we grow up, we're even more aware of the world around us. And sometimes that awareness makes us even more insecure about ourselves. Plus kids have got no uh, sort of limiting mental factors like adults will, will mm. you know, um, feel feel bad if they haven't made progress in a certain amount of time, they feel self-conscious, they're proud, all those sorts of things. Kids don't seem to be weighed down by all that stuff and so their language right. learning journey is probably a lot more smooth and is it, there are fewer obstacles, uh, okay. whereas adults will put all sorts of obstacles in their way, like, oh, I'm not good enough at this, I'm, my, I've got an accent, blah, blah, blah. Um, uh, yeah, so yeah, it does take time. You've got to you know, it's, it takes time like in the same way that kids do it. So as Luke mentions, we adults often feel very insecure about ourselves. We think stuff like, yeah, that person has a better accent than me, or I'm not sure I'm good enough to reach my goal of being completely fluent. And another popular one, everyone is smarter than me because they speak perfect English. I'd rather have that. I'd rather show our students. I think I think your listeners and your students, Ethan, are probably at a similar similar level, right? The intermediate to advanced. I'd rather show them the real English rather than spend time cleaning it up and making it perfect because again, it comes back to our value of connection, not perfection. We don't want to show you perfection because we're not perfect. We make mistakes, right? We know that as native speakers. So why why strive for that? And even though we know that most of those things aren't true, we still keep believing them. So much so that we try to become something that we're not. I do think that in a way I was hoping to erase a part of my past and kind of like 
create a new identity, um, even though it was, of course, it was still me, but I was exploring a lot of new things, and then at some point, you know, I moved back to Israel and then moved back to the U.S. again to, to study acting. Um, and I think back then I was like coming to terms with who I am and my identity. I went back to Hadar and, uh, and then I started to bridge that, uh, those two identities together. Now it's really interesting to see what happened to Hadar. A lot of my colleagues, people who speak English and communicate completely intelligibly, have struggled with it. Speaking English with an accent has become a challenge for them because on the one hand, they are constantly reminded of being an outsider. And on the other hand, being different, not fitting in is a challenge in itself. But these feelings are really like every feeling, stories that we have repeated to ourselves so many times that we just believe them and that's it. Which is the most human thing really. You think that speaking a foreign language is just too much of a hassle and that after all, if English isn't your mother tongue, then it will never be something that you can achieve. But where you start in this case as a learner doesn't dictate where you'll be, which is natural and fluent as a global citizen. Because English, after all, is a, a global language now. It's a global lingua franca. And uh, there are m many English speakers, many voices around the world. It means that everybody Everybody simply has to be a bit more tolerant of accent variation because that's the world. That's the world. It's a global community. We have to, um, we speak locally. We understand globally. That means our tolerance as listeners has to be much bigger than our capability as speakers. And if your goal is to speak English fluently, naturally and confidently, then we have just the thing for you. Our real life English app is the only place where for free, you can speak English anytime, anywhere, and discover other cultures by just touching a button. Plus, you can listen to full interviews with the teachers and experts that you are seeing today with an interactive transcript and vocabulary definitions. Give it a try. Just click here or in the description below to download it now or you can search for Real Life English in the Apple app or Google Play Store. So what do we do? What can we do to overcome the fear of not being a good enough English speaker? Well, first of all, it's important that we know that our path is the one that we make ourselves. No one else can do the work or walk that path for us. Our goals are our own, and there are a million ways to achieve them. But we choose the one that fits best with who we are. Secondly, you need to acknowledge these feelings because they will encourage you to focus on doing the work. Even if it scares you, you have to do it. Have you heard the phrase, fake it until you make it? It suggests that you have got to have a positive mindset towards achieving a goal. There's always more that they want to achieve. It's not just, be, it's not just the language, it's just that English is a reflection of the things that we achieve for ourselves in life. And it's a personal achievement more than it's a language achievement when we feel free and fluent. Now, as I said in the beginning, judging ourselves is the easiest thing to do. But we need to become our biggest fans if we want to move forward on our journey. I invite you to focus on yourself, to have an open mind about English, and accept that mistakes are just steps forward. I think I just realized there's nothing to be afraid of, especially on the internet where people are making themselves avail available to speak with learners of their language. They're inherently going to be helpful, and I'd much rather make embarrassing mistakes in online than in person. And usually, your mistakes aren't embarrassing. 99% of the time, it's just you trying to find the right word. And so realize that there is nothing to be afraid of, but everyone has to make this realization on their own. You can't be told there's nothing to be afraid of. Just lose the fear. Just speak. Everyone has to follow their own journey to, to realize it's going to be okay. Just speak. We are being challenged to decide what's important, and we are being challenged to decide who we can help and where possibility lies. And the loudest voice in our head that's causing us to hold back is the voice that says, it's not our turn, I'm an imposter, I don't know enough, it won't work, I'm not supposed to do this. 